What type of burnisher should you purchase? Steve Hansen here, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. Well, generally, uh, when we're talking about burnishers, uh, uh, typically that's on the commercial side of the industry. You know, that's where we're going out and we're maintaining hard floor surfaces, resilient floor surfaces. And, you know, when you develop your floor program, you know, let's say you're doing a stripping and a waxing, scrubbing or recoating a burnishing or, or spray buffing, um, you're going to have to get some equipment to do that. And, uh, you know, we typically are going to do burnishing because it's uh, uh, much more productive than spray buffing. Uh, spray buffing generally is only done uh, on when you have a less frequency of service type of thing. It does a deeper cleaning, but it takes longer to, to perform. So that's why we do burnishing. So now when we're thinking about selecting what type of, what type of burnisher to get, well, you have a few choices. The first thing you want to think about is always think about the size of the jobs that you're doing. And that's really what's going to determine what type of uh, burnisher that you get. So, you know, the average burnisher, average electric burnisher is a 20 inch. And the thing with these machines is that uh, they, they only move forward and backwards. They don't go side to side like a swing machine or a, a, a buffer. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. And they turn at a higher RPM than your slow speed uh, floor machines, such as your scrubbers and uh, side by sides. But you know the whole <clears throat> the whole thing that we're doing is that we've stripped and whacked our floor, or we scrubbed and recoated it, and we got a good floor pro floor program put together. And we're trying to maintain the sh the level of shine or appearance to the floor. So that's why we're going to burnish. So typically, what we'll do is we'll go in and we'll vacuum, we'll we'll mop on our our conditioner, let it dry, and then we'll take our burnisher, our high speed uh, buffer, and we'll buff the floor. You know, we're going to burnish it. And what we're doing is we're putting a a floor pad on the bottom of the of the machine uh, and we're matching that pad to the type of finish that we have on the floor so if we have a harder finish then we want a more aggressive uh, pad but once we do that now we can use a, an electric burnisher uh, like I say it's a 20 inch and we would move back forward and backwards and typically you're going to take two or three passes and you're going to see the floor snap you're going to see the shine reappear very nicely so generally that's what we want to think about is, okay, what, si what size of floors are we going to be servicing because an electric uh, burnisher would be just fine. Uh, you know, on the other hand, if we're doing uh, bigger retail stores and uh, things like that there, well now we want to start thinking about, well, maybe we should be using a, a battery burnisher or a pro propane burnisher. Now you have to remember, as far as the uh, burnishers, the, probably the 20-inch the electric is probably your, your least expensive. Uh, you know, that could cost you, uh, I'd, I'd probably say you know, $900 to $1,200. Um, and then if you're talking about a battery burnisher, uh, you know, we're looking at a few thousand dollars for that. And again, you know, your battery burnishers will come in various sizes. But always consider the size of your floors that you're doing. If you're doing large grocery stores and things like that there, or if you're doing mid-sized floors, maybe you might use a, a, a smaller 20-inch battery, uh, battery-operated burnisher. If you're doing grocery stores and large retail, now you want to go to a propane burnisher. Uh, they're just much more productive. Uh, you can you can burn us a, a much more uh, more square footage per hour with a propane burnisher than you can with a battery or an electric. And in fact, you know, an electric is actually your your uh, um, uh, uh, your highest production rate, uh, meaning that it takes you a little, takes you longer to accomplish the job. So just keep that stuff in mind. Once you decide on all that, then it's then it makes it pretty simple for you to decide on which type of burnisher to purchase. We've always used uh, 20 inch electrics, uh, just because we always had you know uh, mid sized floors. We never did any uh, large retail. Um, you know the reason why we didn't is just because it, it, there's no money in it. You know it's all price driven. Um, and we weren't going to compete in that market. So uh, ours was uh, all used on professional office buildings and uh, medical. So that's where you know, our machine came in, uh, came in uh, very well to, to do the job. Now one thing that you can do with a 20-inch uh, electric is that you can have a, get a dust control uh, on the machine. So that means that it's just going to, it's going to collect the dust that's created uh, from the machine. Uh, it's going to be collected into a, a reservoir and then you can just dump that. Now you more than likely want to use that type of uh, burnisher when you're doing medical. It may be a requirement in fact. So keep that in mind. 
But anyway, um, so there you have it. Uh, you know, as far as burnishers, you know, what type of burnisher to get. Uh, base it off the size of the accounts that you have and the type of floors that you're, you know, the size of the floors that you're doing. And, uh, you know, obviously your budget comes into play too. Because if you're looking at some uh, propane burnishers, you know, we're talking thousands of dollars. Uh, same thing with battery burnishers. Uh, battery burnishers are also probably the heavier of, of all of them because of the batteries that you have. So you got to think about how you're going to transport these these pieces of equipment. You know, your 20 inch uh, your 20 inch electric, it can be folded up and put into a, a trunk or a van, real simple. So that, you know, the transportation uh, makes it real easy. Uh, your battery burnishers, uh, you're gonna have to have some kind of a van system with a ramp because they are heavy. Uh, one person's not gonna be able to pick that thing up and put it in the back of a vehicle. Uh, the same thing is true with a propane burnisher. You know, they're, they're, they're heavy, they're cumbersome. And then you also have to deal with uh, with the propane, uh, so you got tanks, you know, and there's there's laws and restrictions on those. Uh, you also have maintenance on your propane piece of equipment. Uh, you know, you got to change your oil. You got to make sure that uh, everything is working properly uh, because you want to make sure uh, you don't want to have any poor emissions uh, coming out of the machine. So those are all the things that you got to think about. So. Uh, there you have it. So hopefully this, tape, uh, this tip was helpful for you and if it was go ahead and click on the like button and share button and as usual if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel uh, please do uh, because we have hundreds of videos on how to develop a successful cleaning company. Until next time we'll see ya.